everybody. So, I just got done at the gym, and a couple of vlogs ago, I made a vlog about restarting my fitness journey, and I never did. So, I'm home for the break. I actually want to restart my fitness journey. I am starting nursing school in January, and I just feel like I want to get as healthy as I can before I get slammed with school and stuff. I have made a new little workout plan and I'm this time I'm not putting as much pressure on myself. I'm saying at least three times a week so I don't have to practice practice whoa I don't have to go to the gym every day. I I just don't know if I can do that. So I'm saying three times a week. This is my first week yesterday I went on a nice long walk and today I did some chest and try. So I'm thinking, I do want to incorporate running more because I know like I've said so many times before, like if I can't run, I might look physically fit, but I'm not actually fit. That's how I feel. Okay, that's not how it is for everyone. But that's just like my mindset. I want to incorporate some running, some cardio into that. So this time my focus isn't completely on just lifting. Like when I had my lifting era in the past, it was like just lifting and I really didn't do much cardio so I'm thinking I want to do that now I started reading it ends with us I'm already almost halfway done with it because I just can't it's so addicting it's like it's weird so here are my thoughts on it ends with us in like Colleen Hoover books it's kind of like reality TV it's not really like enriching content that you would get from like a classic book but for some reason you can't put it down like my friend's mom last night described it as a gateway drug and it's so true like once you start reading it like you just can't stop and it's so weird yeah that's my day let's see what else i do today guys i've just birthed twin eggs it was a double yolk um so she gave me her leftover mozzarella sticks tea and look how she ate it <laughs> that is criminal <laughs> You should be put in jail for that. It was a really good day. I worked out. I did a lot of school stuff. Now, I'm just going to read my book. Here. Let me show you. This book. I'm about, I'd say, halfway through. So, I'm a little scared when I get to the end of it. But I've heard the ending is kind of crazy. So, we'll see how far I get tonight. I am so terribly addicted to TikTok because I just said... I didn't just say, I said an hour ago that I was going to read my book and I've been sitting on TikTok. It's a problem, but I can't put it down. <laughs> okay, uh, remember how I said that these books are like crack, like you can't put them down. So it's been like an hour and I have 10 pages left. So my eyes hurt and I'm exhausted, but I just want to finish this book. So let's see how these last 10 pages go. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Um, so that means Emerson gets a new daddy is what I'm hearing. Okay, we're here to talk about something very important. This. I was going to finish up my vlog last night and I just have too many thoughts. So let's just have a little review, a little book club to talk about this book. We're going to start from the beginning with Ryle. Immediate red flag, for sure. I think any time a man expresses his anger emotions towards something in a physical and violent way, red flag. But like chairs, walls, cars, fridges, people, red flag. So immediately red flag with him beating this chair up, okay? And then he's very flirtatious, very charming, which is nice but it's scary and then he gets high gets called into work with him being a neurosurgeon 
doesn't tell them that he's under the influence or that he can't make it in, and goes to work high, red flag. Black. He kind of is very, you know, Lily's like, I don't do one night stands. And he's like, oh, well, how about this one time? He's really not taking no for an answer. Like he did though. So it's, that's kind of like an iffy red flag. He takes a picture of her, which if it was me and someone I just met, I would be like, okay, I'm scared. Delete that right now. So that's the initial red flag. Then we learn about Sir Atlas and he is great guy. Tragic past, but gives like, it gives such a good background for him and Lily. It kind of leaves you wanting them to end up together, especially because of their tragic split where he has to move to Boston. But like, it's just very nice. They're both so caring for each other. And then we go back to when Lily meets Ryle again in her new floral shop where she just hired this woman who happens to be the sister of Ryle. So he comes in and immediately is like, I want to fuck you again. And she's like, I literally have a sprained ankle. Okay, so that's weird. He's under the influence, but like, that's no excuse. We all know what we're doing when we're under the influence. Let's be honest here, okay? So, okay, because the way I was feeling when I woke up, was kind of like Colleen Hoover hungover because I had stayed up really late finishing this book, woke up needing like a debrief. I needed to debrief what the events that had happened last night. I just think there were a lot of red flags with that man. I do think it was weird how he was like, yeah, like I've been going to therapy ever since I was six because I shot my brother, but he still like cannot regulate his emotions at all. And he can't even control them. And she was like, oh my god, well, that makes so much sense. I guess I'll give you a second chance then, even though I have like a gash on my eyeball. No, we're not gonna do that either, ma'am. Second he laid his hands on you, you should have cut him out of your life. So that was a little tricky there. I think it was kind of good because it was like then she could sympathize or empathize one of those with her mom and kind of relate. And her mom was like, don't, don't go back to him. He's gonna keep hitting you. It had a very good ending, I'll give it that. It just goes to show this, like basically this whole book just goes to show you that kids complicate everything. And I just think children ruin everything. And she would have just been able to divorce Ryle, probably still be friends with, uh, what was her name, Melissa, and get with Atlas. But now she has this complicated relationship with Ryle going on. They get a divorce, good, because for a second there, I really didn't think they were, because it was the way it was being phrased in like the last two pages, where she was like, you know what, let's just go back to it. Yeah, until I made a decision about what us, what's best for us family, and it's like, Ryle's amazing in so many ways, he's compassionate, blah, 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 and then it says like, so I totally read this wrong. So she's talking about her dad and how she was like, my dad was just like this too. Um, five minutes of witnessing at his worst couldn't, worst couldn't make up for five years of him at his best. Totally read this wrong. And I thought she was almost like justifying what her dad did and was like, well, like, I guess my dad wasn't that bad. So I'll just stay with Ryle. But then she was like, I want a divorce. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. It's about time for that. Probably good she waited, but it was kind of like, she totally ruined homeboy's biggest day of having his daughter but also like karma's a bitch you know what i mean i liked how that at the end her and uh alice kind of got their like movie ending you know totally like running up to each other i still love you my middle name my daughter's middle name is dory like of course it's dory right so overall i think it was a really good book but i do think there definitely were some definitely some visible red flags from mr ryle before they got married. I think I think before you marry someone, you need to have like that big fight, like a big fight with them to see how they react. And it's like, she did, but she didn't. Like she did have that one and then was like, never let it happen again. So, and then it was like, he. they learned that he needed to walk away or whatever. The initial punching of kicking of the chair, it just would have been a turn off. I, I, I hate to say it, it would have been a turn off for me. I would have been like, this man is violent. This man <laughs> does not know how to regulate his emotions. And this man clearly doesn't know a healthy outlet. Like go for a run if you're mad or go like work out, lift some weights. Let's not punch things. Let's not ruin things. Um, I definitely think he has some major trust issues. And she literally even said it in the book. She was like, if you had just asked me before you had like literally assaulted her, he would have 
saved himself the whole divorce if he would have just been like asked her for an explanation before he beat the shit out of her you know what i'm saying so i wasn't expecting him to become an abusive whore like i get like some men just punch things because they're incapable they have like the emotional range of a teaspoon and the second they feel something slightly different than their average they don't know how to regulate it because that's just how some men are so like yes the punching and beating up the chair at the beginning was a red flag i think i wasn't expecting him to be as abusive as he was especially with that last scene with the whole you know the last beat up scene before her before she called atlas and also like the fact that she had memorized his number in case of this event just shows like you probably probably shouldn't have been with him all along maybe if you memorize someone's number because you deep down had a feeling that you were gonna need a way out because he's so abusive like you probably probably should have been like dang if i always thought this was gonna happen maybe i shouldn't have married him and had a child with him so She's foolish, but she is, you know, like mother like daughter. But she was able to get out, so that's good. Atlas, 10 out of 10 character. Love him. So sweet, so caring. He did kind of overstep the line when he saw her with him and then went in the bathroom with her at his restaurant. That was a little like, okay, ooh, what are you doing there? You know, she's a taken woman. Trust, don't, don't do that. Have some respect for the both of them there. But also, like, it was valid. He was worried. He knew that it's a pattern, you know? I think this was a great book. It's definitely something about these books. Like, each chapter, it's like, you're just taking drugs here. Each chapter, it's like, you just want more, you want more, you want more. Like, you cannot put it down, and I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know if Colleen Hoover puts, like, crack in these books because you just can't stop reading it. And it's like, like i said like it's not enriching stuff like it's not like it's a good book but it's not like a classic literature piece that you're like taking home like a deep message you know it's not like not like something like that like i don't think it's going to be like a classic piece of literature in the future because it's definitely like reality tv show like you can't put it down but at the same time it's not like enriching material that's going to enrich your mind but for some reason like you just can't stop you can't stop reading it you can't stop watching it you know what i mean and that's what's so cool about her books that's what i like about them this is only the second book i've read by her the only other book i've read is ugly love and it was the same vibe like i just couldn't put it down but at the same time i was like i think it's because like when i started out reading i read i read like classic books to get me into it so now like when i read books like this i'm like wow like they're it's an easy read but it's just so like, I don't know, kudos to freaking Colleen Hoover because she knows how to freaking get her audience hooked on something. So overall, good book. I want to read the next one now. 10 out of 10. Bye.